To summarize channel 1 in an electromyogram, we're looking at positive and negative values measured in millivolts. So again, just to remind you, we're measuring where the electrical activity is between two different electrodes. So whenever the electrical activity is higher at the electrode 1, we'll have our negative values. And when it's higher at electrode 2, we'll have our positive values. We will take the peak to peak of our raw data found in channel 1, which is actually going to take a maximum value and subtract a minimum value from it. And so right now I'll show you how to obtain that value, which is 2.82471. We'll take our maximum of 1.0. We'll take our maximum of 1.0. 30127 and subtract the minimum which is 1.52344 but it is negative and that will give us 2.82471 so whenever we measure peak to peak we take the maximum and subtract the minimum you take a positive subtract a negative you end up with a positive value that is what peak to peak is measuring. And so what this tells us is the highest electrical activity found at each electrode, E1 and E2. Again, E1 and then E2. Channel 40 takes the raw data found in channel 1, converts everything to absolute value because we don't have subtracted electrical activity from existence. It is happening, so it is positive and it's going to make it a rate by saying how many millivolts in a given amount of time, I believe it's 0.1 seconds, are occurring. And we get values that are only positive here. So again, millivolts per second is a rate of how much electrical activity in a given amount of time is occurring. So that is your average rate because we are taking the mean here. So what that means is if I highlight this and look at my channel 40 mean, I have 0 0.265 millivolts occurring every second within this clinch effort on average because it's taking the beginning, the middle, and the end of the clinch effort. And then what is the average rate in that clinch effort? That is what channel 40 mean really tells you. So notice if I go from a lower value, I have 0 0.047, increase a little bit more. As the clench efforts increase in force output, we end up with higher mean values in channel 40. We can also measure change in time using the delta T. And so if I choose channel 1, delta T, and channel 40, delta T, I'd just like to show you that those two values will always be the same because they're sharing this x-axis. What they differ on is their y-axis values, whether we have positive and negative or only positive values 